My name is Gordon Bruce, and I am one of the contributing designers to The Thinking Machine. Danny Hillis uh, and Tomiko Teal and Ted Bilodeau, who was also a consulting mechanical engineer, and myself, Gordon Bruce, and Alan Hawthorne, we were hired as industrial design consultants to uh, aid in the appearance of the cabinet. The design objectives really came from Danny Hillis. He was designing a new machine that was totally different from every other computer at the time. So there had to be some excitement, some sense of modernism that was conveyed in the design itself. The prior cabinet uh, was an initial concept that was actually developed in uh, thinking machines by Tomiko. She was asked to design the machine and what she found was in order to do so it was about 10 feet tall. So Tomiko went back to the engineers and just said we have to make this a whole lot smaller. And the other requirement was that Danny wanted the machine to have a sense of human scale. So he told Tomiko, I want you to design the machine the same height as you. So this was five feet three inches. And this is really the only uh, sort of step forward that happened uh, within thinking machines. And then myself and Alan Hawthorne, who worked as design consultants on the outside, we were also asked to take a look at um, very different ways of assembling all the boards and making unique packaging. We had ones that you could actually walk under and ones that were totally different from what was being done at the time. There was a sense of inspiration for the cube, uh, both within thinking machines and by us as consultants. We uh, saw a sculpture that's actually here in New York City, uh, created by an artist by the name of Rosenthal, and it's called Alamo. And it's a cube that is really um, teetering on its point, and it's a black cube with several uh, cubes within it. And this serves sort of as a, a uh, icon of sorts, or a, a model or a concept that we were uh, interested in, in following. In Thinking Machines, Tomiko had had a, a discussion with Richard Feynman about how all of these connections would work internally within the machine itself. And what came out of this was Tomiko's famous t-shirt drawing of uh, a hypercube, which really came to be the same idea as what we saw represented in Rosenthal's Alamo. So in one sense, the computer actually almost designed itself. We tried to show great restraint in uh, not adding any issues, but actually amplifying those issues that the computer itself had already within its internal workings. Thus, you can see why we use the transparent uh, form, because it allowed you uh, some internal vision of what the machine was about but there was also a, a little bit of mystery because it, it was a black surface that would hide an awful lot of what was really behind uh, the panels itself. But it would give you a little bit of a taste by watching the uh, LEDs. And the LEDs themselves, I should say, were highly functional. Uh, they actually gave feedback to the software people using the machine to see which component was activated. And in a sense, this would be the soul of the machine. This would show you the activity of the machine. So this is kind of looking within a brain and watching all the neurons uh, make their connections as the process, the parallel process, was actually happening. When we were looking at materials, uh, we were looking at the black plexi with a matte surface. And when we built the full-scale models, we actually would take the tinted plexiglass and then also sand it down and then spray it with a matte surface. But we we're also interested in looking at other materials and we found a stainless steel that is used in brewing beer and the stainless steel is really a sieve or a filter 
to take little tiny particles of hops out of the brewing process. When you look at the stainless steel, it looks like a piece of stainless steel, but when you hold it up to light, light comes through it because of these microscopic holes. So we felt that this would be another in interesting interpretation of the machine, was to do a complete stainless steel machine, but with parts of it that you could see through. Because it also acts as a Faraday cage, which uh, would at the same time prevent different types of radio waves from emitting within. It also made a lot of sense from a functional standpoint. Danny really liked the black plexiglass because there was some added mystery to it and uh, it was just an eye-popping solution with the red lights. Uh, actually, the design process is well documented within several of the books that we kept uh, that basically followed the design process from the very beginning to the very end. And you can see uh, within this notebook that we kept a lot of the original sketches and other concepts that uh, we were exploring at the time. These sketches are what led to uh, the ultimate solution. And you can see this is the final sketch uh, showing the final direction that we took with the louvers that would have venting on it um, and uh, just sort of the configuration of the, the black boxes. What we call the belt lines. Uh, these belt lines would suck in cold air at this level, mid, uh, sort of around the belt line of the machine, and then blow the hot air out the top and the hot, out, hot air out the bottom. You did not want to suck in cold air from the bottom because then what you were doing is really sucking in all the dust and the dirt. So th even the machine's belt line and uh, louver design had pure functionality to it. Later on in the process, we uh, also contributed to working with the mechanical engineer, Ted Delado, uh, trying to help visualize how you would actually make all these different parts and fit together. So it wasn't just about designing the aesthetic, but it was about how you would make the aesthetic really work uh, with the requirements of the machine. And I've been asked uh, several times, how would we change the design of the, the connection machine from almost a little over 30 years ago? And we wouldn't. Uh, we felt that it was a perfect uh, demonstration of technology at that time and it was really uh, about restraint and allowing the machine to be what it, what it is. And I think the fact that it is sitting here in the Museum of Modern Art for its aesthetic as well as sitting in the uh, Computer History Museum in Mountain View for its technology is a true statement to the quality of the design both inside and outside and I'm sure none of us who participated would ever change a thing.